I'm Jacob, I'm Yuri. and we're going for a drive. We've got the successor to the legendary Fiesta ST, Focus ST, the 2009 Edge ST. Yeah, we do. It's, okay. it's not the successor. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not. <laughs> but it kind of is because there's no more cars that you can get from Ford that are STs. This is part of the Ford Performance Division, just like the Ford GT is. Okay. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So horsepower and torque. 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque from a 2.7 liter twin-turbo V6. Those are good numbers. They are good numbers, and this thing is quick. What kind of transmission does it have? It's got an eight-speed auto, which sometimes feels like a CVT. We're gonna go on a little transmission rant in a couple minutes. But first, let's actually talk about this engine, because this engine is fantastic. It is so quick. It is fast. It is definitely fast. But it's kind of a weird fast. Well, that's because of the transmission. Okay. So the engine itself pulls really hard. There's no lag pretty much anywhere. You floor it, you're gone if you're in the right gear. How's the handling? The handling's fantastic. Let's test it in Cliche Corner. It does way better than you think it would for an SUV. It's still very comfortable. The turning's great. I find the turn-in to be kind of artificially good. So like, you know exactly when it's gonna turn in because as soon as you turn the wheel, it turns in. But it's almost kind of artificially boosted. You can kind of feel that. Well, it does have brake torque vectoring. Yes, it does. So that does help with handling. And it is all-wheel drive. It does feel kind of understeery when you really push it. But again, this is an SUV, so I kind of expect that. Is this a fake ST? Yes. I think they should have called this the ST line, kind of like M Performance or whatever. The engine is great. It should still be an ST, but it kind of shouldn't. It should still be the Edge Sport because there's no more Sport anymore, so this replaced it. Can we get into the transmission rant? Yeah, let's yes! do this. Ah! Are we gonna start in paddle mode or in automatic? Just regular automatic. Okay, floor it. I'm gonna floor it and drive. It's quick. Now I'm going to floor it and drive in Sport and you probably hear a difference in the audio. Let's talk about that first. <laughs> okay, it's like the, the wildest, fakest, most pumped in audio ever. It's so funny. As soon as you press the S button, it is comically loud. And if you toggle through, you can hear the difference. We're gonna try that for you right now. So I'm gonna switch to my paddles. I'm gonna downshift into second gear. So now you can hear the audio from second gear. Yuri, in two seconds, hit the S button for me. <laughs> it is the most comical difference I've ever heard in any car ever. So besides the pumped-in audio, how does the paddle shifting work? Okay, the pumped-in audio sounds bad, I think, as yeah. well. But moving on from that, the paddles, I don't like the actual paddle feel. They're very cheap and clicky. But what I don't like the most is that I can't downshift when I want to. So when you click the paddles, the tack automatically shows up? Yes, it does. But is it useful? No. It's like digital kind of laggy, small, hard to see. Exactly. And now we're gonna do a quick cutaway to show you exactly what we're trying to explain. Gear up, please gear up. Please oh, gear sorry, because it's, yeah, it's a little bit annoying gear sounding. Up. Okay. Okay, the weirdest thing to me is that first gear and third gear are gears, but I feel like second gear can either be first or third at any time. Yeah, sometimes you click up and it doesn't really feel like it did anything, but the number changed. Yeah, <laughs> between first, second, and third. Yeah, it almost feels like a CVT sometimes. It's the weirdest transmission I've ever used. It's like the weirdest, fakest, oddliest sounding thing ever. Yeah, so I do have a solution for this. I actually wish that there were no paddles in this car. Automatic only? Yes. Because when you put this into drive or sport and you don't touch the paddles, it's completely fine. The transmission shifts quickly. As long as you don't use the paddles, you don't know that there's so much lag and weird stuff going on. And then they also need a hard button to turn off that stupid fake audio. Yeah, but I mean, I guess that's your drive, but then you don't get the sport shifting. Exactly. So like, I know. you need to have... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to shift quick. Yeah. So that's the end of our transmission rant. Can I say something nice about this? Yeah, go ahead. It looks so good. It looks fantastic. Do you want to talk about looks? Yes. I love the way this looks. The front end, they absolutely nailed it. It looks amazing. It kind of looks just like a bigger Focus ST, Fiesta ST. Yeah, and I do think the color really helps, not to veer off from the front end, but the color really helps this look so good. Here's a quick shot of how nice the body lines look. Here's another one. 
And here's one more. I really like it. The headlights look great. It looks pretty aggressive from the front. The grille is fantastic. I really like the front end of this thing. I really like the look of the taillights. I think they're okay. I think it's a very original design with the red going through the white, and I think it looks fantastic. I do like the thick red bars. I think BMW is doing something kind of similar to that right now. From the side, it does look like we have like quite a bit of a body kit on it, like side skirts. Yeah, exactly. But they're actually just extensions of the door, which is cool like the Rolls Royce because you can get out when it's dirty and you're not gonna get your pants muddy up. Exactly, and we recently reviewed the Hyundai Santa Fe, which also had that feature, so here's a little clip of that. Watch that video as well. Oh, and I really like the wheels on this. They suit the car yeah. so well, the black wheels, they're huge. You know what I really like for some weird reason? What's that? The exhaust tips. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> they're like vertical? <laughs> they're, they're like vertical, square, rectangular trumpet things. I dig it. I don't. Like you can see the exhaust behind it, but I think the shape is cool for an SUV. Yeah, it's different, so I will give them that, and they are metal tips. Overall, with the ST badges, it looks very good. It does. And before I let you drive, I do have one major complaint, the driving position. I feel like I'm driving on top of this thing. Do you remember that old Mr. Bean thing where he was on top, sitting yeah. on a couch and controlling the car from the outside? Oh, yeah, yeah. That is how I feel when I'm driving this thing. Compared to the GLC 63 that we drove, which is a fast SUV, that Way one faster. was like low and sporty. Yes. Even the Santa Fe felt lower and sportier. Exactly, the Santa Fe, and that's not even like an ST, like a sport model. That's my biggest problem with the driving position. It's just way too tall. Santa Fe, end line. Hop into these uncomfortable seats and floor it in sport mode. Go for it. If I needed to get away from bad guys, this would probably get the job done, but it sounds gross the whole time, so I'm gonna put it back into drive. Now let's talk about the seats. The seats are so uncomfortable. So Focus ST, Fiesta ST, Focus RS traditionally have weird seats they either love or hate. Yes, they are Recaros usually, and again, like you said, love or hate. This has an ST seat, and it's like, not as buckety as those, but it's also kind of buckety and uncomfortable. Like, I feel like I'm not in the seat, I'm on top of the seat. It's buckety in the wrong spots. So the side bolsters down by your legs, I yeah. feel like I'm sitting on top of it and it's really uncomfortable digging into my thighs. Like, I don't have a huge butt, but I feel like I'm sitting on top of the bolster. Yeah, exactly, same here. Like, you're way smaller than I am and it's just, it's the same feeling for both of us, which is weird because we didn't have the same feeling in the- Focus ST. Exactly. But they look really cool. Oh, for sure, and they yeah. say ST. Yeah, exactly. Oh, bonus so, points. Talk about the interior. Yes, steering wheel. I like parts of it, I hate parts of it. It feels nice in my hands. It does, and it looks pretty cool with the white stitching, but what bothers me the most is the menu buttons on the right. Your hand slips off at the up arrow on the right side. Yeah, I don't like the gauges, and I don't like the buttons, and I don't like the way everything is controlled. It's just not for me. And you wanna know another nasty thing about these gauges as well? What's that? If you're in paddle mode, it shows the tack, right? Yes. You can hide the tack through the menu, and then it shows your RPM in blue next to the gas, and it's like, what is this? And it looks like like the gas gauge, it's going up and down. It's like, uh, I know. Ah, yeah, the gauges are pretty bad in this, except the center one, which is nice and analog. Yeah, but it's your <laughs> speed. Like, uh, the, the, the center is where I want an, an analog tack, yes, and then I want a digital display in the middle. Yeah, I feel like they didn't make a good use of the gauges with the left and right ones. Like, the right ones are basically useless. Yeah, but it'll show me like what's playing full song, full title, full station, first satellite radio. That's it, though. Everything else is useless. Like, your phone, I don't need to stare at my phone screen there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's talk about the infotainment. Go for it. Sync three, don't like it. It, no rewinding satellite radio stations. I like it, I don't mind it. So it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yes, it does. Apple CarPlay is so washed out, like it's the wrong colors. Android Auto is fine. Well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the system. It works well, but the climate's buried into it. Let's get into that. So we do have a lot of hard buttons for our climate. What can we not do with the hard buttons? Adjust where the actual air comes out. Yeah, just add like two more buttons. Like one more button would solve this. Yeah, there's enough blank areas up here and down here. Like you can add that. It's just Add it. So if I'm in Apple CarPlay in Google Maps or something, I need to click the home button. Then I need to click the Ford button. Then I need to click the climate button and then I can adjust that. So what I like to do is just leave it in auto and then adjust the temp plus or minus and just let the car control where it's coming from. Add hard buttons. I think we Photoshopped this in the Focus ST video, but like- Yeah, we did. Man, you guys need to change some stuff up. Just a couple more buttons. That's all it would take. Now to some good stuff. We got this cool compartment up here for no reason. Yeah, sunglass holder. Isn't this a sunglass holder? Okay, fine, it's a bogey holder. <laughs> Darts. And then we got some fake carbon over here. It's just straight up fake carbon. There's no hiding it. I think it looks kind of cool though. We've got cup holders. It fits a small cup of coffee. Yes, it does. And then there's gloss black everywhere though. Yeah, and like fake chrome stuff. Yeah. Is that fake? That's for sure fake. <laughs> 
Hey, how about the visors? Oh yeah, that's right. I don't know if these pass are. I think they will. Ford's Three, are usually pretty good. Two, one. Yes. yes. Good job. Oh man, that. It extends. It extends. The effort is all that counts. <sighs> yeah, I guess. And then back down here, we got our scrolly knob thing for shifting. I got used to it pretty quick. So did I, I don't mind it. What I like is that we do have a camera button that will show the front and rear camera, which is very nice. I like having a hard button to get to that right away. Is there a 360 camera? No. Exactly. But it, it's good because sometimes you just want to make sure there's no little kids running in front of you, especially in the Raptor, that was very useful. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if there's a front and a rear, you might as well add some side ones and get the full thing. True. Another thing I like, this has automatic parking and it's just like that Lincoln Continental we reviewed like two years ago. It's very good, very clear, very easy to know where it's looking for a spot and when it's found one and where you're gonna actually park. Yeah, Fords are great at that. And then we have soft touch everywhere, a little bit more gloss on the door panels, but the actual white stitching looks really nice. Up here is a little bit cheap, but that's fine. Sound system, Bang & Olufsen, not very good. Not very good at all. And in the back seats, the legroom is actually pretty good. It's not the best, but what they did was they softened the backs of the seats so your knees don't dig into it as much. I really like that. Back to seats real quick. I forgot that pretty much all ST seats have this cool ratcheting headrest thing. Yeah, that is kind of nice to have. And the rear seats also recline so you can get even more comfortable in the back. And then behind that, we can store some boxes. 15 boxes, not bad at all. So we have a nice big sunroof as well. Yeah, it's huge. And that brings me to looking out the front windshield. What do you think of the visibility? Visibility is good, but it's like such a long hood and windshield and everything. I feel like I'm one of those 90s Pontiac minivans, the vacuum cleaners. The vacuum cleaner, yeah, yeah. The, the Oldsmobile silhouette. Just the perspective from in here, I get that. We also have some colored lights that we can change inside, which is kind of nice. Yeah, but then the whole interior at night looks kind of cheap because it has that like teal color on all the buttons that I, we don't like. Yeah, and how about the trunk lid? It does have a kick to open thing, which works pretty well as long as you know where the sensor is. Otherwise you're stuck standing there looking like a clown. And you can kick to close. Exactly. So overall, what do you think of this thing? I mean, it's kind of quick, but I don't like it. Why don't you like it? The seats, the infotainment, the seating position. It's nice that it's fast, but it's not in a good way because I can't use the paddles. It's like kind of the worst of everything, but like still fast. I also think that they should have just made this an ST line and they should have just given you the regular engine from the base one so that you could just make it look cool because this should just look cool. I really like how this looks, but I don't need that extra performance in this because it's not enough extra performance to justify it. Or it's not done correctly. Yeah, well, if they fix the transmission, then maybe it'll be fine. But right now, I don't like this transmission at all. Okay, so how much does this cost? This costs $49,000 to start. Canadian. This one is optioned out to just over $56,000. And what does this compete with? Well, that's the thing. That's what's unique about this, is there's no real competition for this. There's no American cars that have slightly more performance than their base models. So it's in a weird position that you actually have to go up market to like an Audi SQ5 or a Porsche Macan S to be able to get something that is relatively competitive in terms of horsepower, but it costs like 10, 15, $20,000 more. What about like a Jeep SRT? Jeep SRT is $72,000 to start. That's a lot more. Uh, yeah. So the closest competitor is actually the Porsche Macan S at $61,000. Not that much more. But a regular Macan would still probably dummy this. No, it wouldn't. You don't think so? No. Not in terms of straight line performance. Turns and shifting. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe general overall enjoyment. Yeah, but I'm going straight line performance. And a Macan is also slightly smaller than this. This should kind of be with a Cayenne. It's kind of in the middle. Anyways, it's a weird I don't category. Feel, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> with you comparing this to a Macan. I know. I'm just saying price-wise, sort of performance-wise, because horsepower similarities that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's in a weird position and people might actually appreciate that because you can't get anything like this from a North American brand right now other than this Edge ST. So who do you think buys this kind of SUV? I'm not really sure. I guess dads that like yeah. really just kind of want to go faster than like their brother-in-law or something. Yeah. <laughs> like the people who used to buy the Grand Prix. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you've been looking at the Edge ST and if you've driven one or what you thought about it. Yeah, like I don't hate this. I don't love it, but I don't necessarily like it either. So let us know what you think about it. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. YouTube membership button. Uh, is there anything else? Like and share. Oh yeah, like, share, and leave a comment as well. That's our new thing for 2019. See you later. See you guys. Hey guys, this is my Abarth 124 Spider visor test. As I'm sure you already know, visors do nothing and it fails. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. <laughs>
break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even. We didn't do that.